It's sad. This point seems to be lost in the minds of those by future, no, seems to be lost by the future by conflicted morals. A time of self-destruction can be the worst to describe this new society. We buy our freedom and forget the struggle that still continues. All the pieces connect together. Poverty fuels hunger and violence once encased in a contained environment. If you look into the bigger picture, our society has been developed, developed to maintain a utilitarian mindset. Now this means a majority rules over the minority. This seems like an impossible plan, but those unaware will realize flooding the ghetto with drugs, violence, weapons, and lower education standards will create oppression on another basis. Propaganda influencing racial and prejudice view inflates isolation and prevents boundaries from being broken. Misinterpreting information creates division and fuels ignorance, while the lack of assistance to resolve the problem slowly destroys the race or generation. Those in case of that environment become the minority, with mind blockages aimed to stimulate self-destruction instead of self-growth. Several solutions to this problem could be addressed. First to be stated is the people becoming aware of the new oppression standards. Noting that television propaganda information, reduced educational teachings, and isolation are steps to deterioration and are keys to keeping from waking our unconscious minds. Resistance of any sort will divulge awareness of those blinded and prevent some issues from occurring depending on the type of resistance. Now, for those that says being the minority doesn't seem that bad, you need to realize your opinion doesn't matter unless you stand out. The system will control your actions, your decisions, and create their own vision of what your world should look like. Now, I ask myself, how long will we wait until our destruction is completed. We blind our souls by abusing ourselves. Drugs, sex, and violence isolate us, making us become self-absorbed. Coincidentally, we must free ourselves by loving and understanding ourselves. Our pain will become peace once our eyes are open. Thank you. Yeah, give it up for Femi for dropping a little essay. John Rastafari, and you know how we do. Salam, Shalom, Hotel. What's good? How y'all doing today? Yeah, it's good to be here, you know? Uh, got a lot of information to cover today. I'd like to say, first of all, I want to thank uh, the culture educators for inviting me, the Brother Prime. Emmanuel, I think me and Brother Emmanuel kind of hooked up like last year around July. We started talking and building and talking about coming up. It's been a long time coming, so almost a year later, tomorrow will be July. So about a year, about a year later, I'm here. Had some problems. I had a long trip, y'all. So man, I'm surprised I'm still up. But I drove all the way from St. Louis to here because you know how these devils are. They didn't want to give me my passport. <laughs> so I drove when I got to the border. You know, they didn't want to let me in. But I had to bend the mind of the, of, the, of the lady who was trying not to let me in. But, you know, I had to come through. You know, my word is my bond regards to whom or what. So regardless if the airplane didn't come through or the car broke down or whatever the case may be, I came, yo. So I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy that y'all invited me out. I don't want to share a lot of stuff with y'all today. Good thing. Um, one of the first things I want to deal with is uh, uh, the law of attraction and what we're doing in the science of man, the science of woman, the science of the primordial energy that's in man and woman, how we can tap into that, what we can do. So often that we hear 
uh, our culture being adored, but never, rarely ever, do we do the practices of what our ancestors did. We just adore them. Like I was telling the brother uh, Sankofa, it's like if you admire your uncle, say your uncle is a mechanic, your uncle passes away. If you hang a picture on the wall, you build an altar to your uncle, you say, my uncle was great. You go tell everybody about your uncle, what kind of mechanic shop he had, how many customers he had, all the things he could do, he can fix your car, even if he only had one wheel, whatever. Well, it's cool to adore him, to build upon him and talk about how great he was, but you can become just as great. So when we talk about our ancient culture, ancient Egyptian culture, ancient Hindu culture, ancient Omex Aztec culture, we talk about how great they were. We say, oh, they, we, we this. You see that stone hedge? Look at that broad nose. See how great he are? See how great he was? You see that pyramid? See how it lines up with those constellations and things of that nature? But we never do the practices of that they did. And we wonder why we're in the predicament that we are in. We never do the magic, we never tap into the melanin, we don't know how to because we're not reading the books on the how to, we're reading the books on how great they were. We're talking about how great they were, we're not doing none of the work. We're not doing the spiritual work. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. Because we're in a particular dimensional shift at this particular time, which I've talked about on several lectures, if you get any of my DVDs. We're in a, dim in a dimensional shift and I'm going to prove that to you today. Because the earth is vibrating at a higher rate than it was 10 years ago, five years ago. The hertz of the earth is higher. The earth is turning. The poles are shifting. The ice is melting. Things of that nature is happening. You did where we're coming from? But we're not doing the work. Why some brothers came across from Canada to, to the United States? Because the devil is still in charge. You know what I mean? So we need to start tapping into this energy and be able to bend these things, bend things that I will. We say we gods, we goddesses, we herbs, we all this, then the third. Now it's time to get busy. Uh, this is going to be not only just a, a lecture, because I don't just want to come up here and lecture to you. I want to kind of do like a workshop, kind of get kind of intimate. If everybody from the back can move up to the front, I want my family close to me today. That'd be real good. That'd be real good because we're going to talk about a lot of things that's going on in the world. We're going to deal with some science. We're going to deal with some culture. We're going to deal with it all. But most of all, this is not just going to be a lecture. It's going to be a workshop. So we're going to do some different exercises today, and let's deal with some things. One of the things I want to deal with is how we relate to each other. Why relationships don't work. Everybody want to talk about that, right? First of all, we need to understand who we're dealing with. I said this outside earlier. Men, stop expecting your women to think like you. Women, stop expecting your man to feel like you. Let's go through a little history. Some old ancient history that's probably the oldest history in the universe. We came out of what you call the nothingness or what they call the triple stages of darkness. Right? This is what you call melanin. There's different intelligence, inte intelligent agents in this melody. One of the energies is the feminine energy, which just is an activating principle, which activates or sparks. So we have the feminine energy in the beginning of creation, with the activation spark of the male. You all know, often wonder why the Catholics worship Mary and Jesus, the mother and the son. That's, a, that's so old. That, that, that particular 
history of that is so old. It came from us. It's a primordial energy talking about, talking about a primordial science of male and female. When you see the baby on the lap of Isis, I said, that represents the, the reflection or the aspect of the activating principle of the soul. That's the energy that existed in the beginning. Now, since we're going to deal with it first from some things that we all go through, relationships with brothers, brothers with brothers, sisters with sisters, brothers and sisters, because we all have some issues with each other, right? We have to understand this. I talked to the Lady Locks on the radio, on the radio show a couple weeks ago, and she asked me a question, what can the black woman do to help the black man? So I don't always, I don't come from it, come from a perspective of just the black woman. Although I've dealt with that science for a long time on its own because not a lot of people deal with the science of the woman. You know what I mean? So, but I dealt with it from a holistic point of view. And one of the reasons why I dealt with it from a holistic point of view is because black men and black women need each other. Right? So black women and black men need each other. The other reason I dealt with it from that point of view is because a lot of times, if you put a male or female up on a certain pedestal, then the ego kicks in. And just to share some personal experiences that I've had, basically with black women, because I've, I've dedicated most of my teachings just like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to teaching black women. Especially in the late 90s and the early 2000s. What I found was, anytime you talk, teach the black woman, not all women now, I'm not talking about all the black women, but anytime you teach the science of the black woman that she is so powerful, and let me show you your history for real, and not coming from a westernized perspective of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism on a religious level, then something happens for the most part. And what happens is this. You start sharing the science and the knowledge with her. She'll pick that book up one day when you're talking to her and she'll say, you know what? I'm greater than you. So let me explain something to you. Because we're going to deal with that science of polygamy today too because a lot of people are scared to talk about that. And the reason why is because we're afraid of the black woman. Tell the truth. We are afraid of the black woman. We are afraid to say, hey, uh, sister, uh, how you doing? Peace. Uh, I like you, I think you're very cultural. I'd like for you to be in my cycle. And uh, she gonna say, well, okay, cool. I said, but I wanna let you know one thing. I do have a wife already. You be coming to the site. You did? <laughs> so, most of us won't do that. Why? Because we all been in this situation, brothers. We're going to tell the sisters the truth today and stop lying to them that we've had a woman or a sister that we adore. And then there's always another woman that we start to talk to and get interested in and start to build with it, you find yourself doing like this. True indeed. So what we do, because of Western society and religion, what do we do? We break up with one of them and keep the other. Or play the other one until you get caught up or one of them do something wrong to you that you break up with. True? Am, am I lying? Any brother in here that, 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 that if I'm lying, say something right now. Okay, sisters, we're telling you the truth today. Okay? We're going to get into that because I got a lot of stuff to show you. I hope I got enough time, man. But we're just going to deal with some basic things first because the practical things that goes on in life that we can cure ourselves of. Another reason why I wanted to talk about some of these things is because I had the honor to, uh, through the years, 
to be able to communicate with spirits or the spirit world or multi-dimensional parts of ourselves. So one day, the sister in the back, that's the goddess Rhonda, me and her were talking. So I asked Rhonda, I said, Rhonda, uh, can you do me a favor? She said, yeah. I said, can you go into the spirit world and tap in and see if you can find the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Right? She said, okay. She said, you know how it is when these spirits come, sometimes they get a little feisty and I can't really handle this. I say, I say, I don't think it's gonna be that hard. So she went in, we called up the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, y'all. And one of the reasons I wanted to call him up is because this man is very dear to me. And the reason why I say he's dear to me is because I started getting knowledge of self at around the age of 13, 14 years old. So I like 20 years of mass of different schools of knowledge. One of the first people who sparked my attention, got my attention, was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I soon moved on, but what he gave has stuck with me as a foundation of the things that I'm learning today. One of the things he said was, black man, black woman, learn all the sciences of all things in the universe. So when I was building with the brothers in the nation, the brothers in, when I started studying different sciences of the universe, the brothers said, you know what? Uh-uh, you need to leave that alone, just study the message of the black man, study how to eat to live, study who to woo, just study these books. Well, me, you saying I supposed to listen to Honorable Elijah Muhammad, well, I'm gonna listen to him, and he said study all the sciences of, of life. So I started studying. So, I, of course, want to get in contact with him. Now, some people think that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is alive on a spaceship somewhere. <laughs> that he died and, oh, he didn't die. He never died and he's alive on a spaceship. Well, me being who I am, I always tend to step on people's toes because when shit irks me, I gotta tell the truth. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad died, passed away, he's in the essence, and his spirit is in us. So when I asked Rhonda to tap into the, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad one night, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad came through. Boy, I was happy. Like, damn. It's just like your grandfather that you never seen, but you learned so much from him. You know what I mean? So I got a chance to, you know, I was like, well, I don't know what I'm gonna say to him, you know? It's like one of those things when it happens, like, you know, you want it to happen, but you don't know what to do when it happens. So, what am I gonna say to him? So, I said, oh, okay, oh, oh. Uh, tell me where you are. This act, this action, this hypothetical question. Where are you? I'm in the, the realm of the spirit, the realm where everybody goes when they die. That's where I am. I said, okay, cool, okay. This is the key thing I asked him. I said, why did you come to black people? He said, I came to black people because black people need a healing. I said, hmm. that was enough for me. He didn't say, well, I don't know the science of us being God and all that stuff, but he said, my main purpose for coming to black people is because black people need a healing. So, in my time frame of doing lectures, traveling, running businesses, and all kind of stuff. The guy said, I got like eight arms, rules with eight arms or whatever. So I'm doing a lot of things. A lot of things start to transform. If you notice, uh, if you look at one of my DVDs, the next one, you ain't, it's not gonna be the same. It's gonna be something different about it because I'm in the constant growth. So the people of Toronto, don't call me back here next week to do a lecture because I have some growing to do, I have some things to experience in the spirit, things to experience, experience on the knowledge realm, and I come back next month. 
because I'm not going to come and give you the same thing over and over again. That's crazy. I will refer you to some information that I already did. Get that DVD. You want to know about that? Get that DVD. I might mention some of these things. So in the process of my growth through these months of business and studying and just experiencing things, one brother in North Carolina asked me, he said, man, Ruger, man, you know, you, you seem to be very powerful, man. I really like your work, man. Uh, what do you do all day, man? You know, I say, shit, man, uh, I experience being God. Even if that's eating a hamburger, that's my experience. No matter what that is. It's no big deal now. We know the gods and nerves. As gods, we first start building on the science and the knowledge. We got the lessons. We build it. We constantly spit them jewels out. And you know what I'm saying? But a lot of times, we don't get a chance to internalize these things spiritually. So it becomes lower level energy. That's why the Father said, that 120 is the foundation. You dig? So, another shout out I'm gonna give to Father Allah, the Father, because when I stopped dealing with the brethren and sisters in the nation, I knew where to go. I knew that I could be free to express myself and learn more and Nobody wasn't gonna judge me, then start building with the gods and earth, then these niggas <laughs> got religious on me. Same shit. Got religious on me. You know it, because you know some gods that get religious on you. True and D God, true and D God, people out of TV land, true and D God, God is earth, true and D. Why? Because they say this. What's your foundation? This is what I'm going to tell you my foundation is. Oops. My foundation is Christianity. Why? Because I experienced my first experience of spirituality in that first. That's my foundation. So, when I did decide to go into the rituals and spirituality, it felt so familiar that when I did feel it, I was able to embrace it and not shut it down. So that was my first foundation. But then it gets even deeper than that. My foundation in reality is the universe itself. Because I was there in the beginning, before there was a beginning. So, we dealing with a few mundane things that's going to get a little spiritual. Talk about the chakra system a little bit here. And how it relates to our growth and people as us as people. Not just growth, but certain things that we have blockages in. Got a good shot of that, bro. Because, believe it or not, the system of the chakras has the biggest part to play, play in your spiritual development. In your spiritual development. Most people are functioning on the, these three levels, the lower chakras of the spleen, the navel chakra, and the base chakra. You ever wonder why brothers in the hood is always riding down the street, booming and shit? Because they're, Function on the base level. Basically. <laughs> Pretty good. Let me explain something to you. When hip hop 
There I go talking about hip hop again. This is black dot shit, but I can't help it because it's my first love in music, hip hop. In hip hop, most of hip hop in the beginning, although we had some knowledge and some consciousness, it was still on the base level. And the reason why that is, because the only thing we had was a drum beat. Basically a drum machine. So we had, let's, okay, last night I'm listening to Eric B and Rakim check out my melody. Or was it this morning? I don't know. I get my days mixed up because I've been driving all night. <laughs> check out my melody. That's the shit, right? Listen to Rakim, check out my melody. The beat is bang is basically just a beat with Eric B scratching over it. And Rakim, if it wasn't for that right there, I wouldn't listen to that song. Although the beat is banging. That's why I can listen to Prime. Commercial rappers wasting time. That's why I can listen to the brother Prime. If you haven't heard his, his music, man, you need to get it. But we are functioning on this level. And let me explain to you what happens to us at an early age in childhood when we function on this level. What happens is this. We all are going to go through some type of traumatic experience between the ages of zero and 15. Let me show you what happens. Spiritually, you start to develop, supposedly, these chakras start to develop. Try to anyway. When you get 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, whatever you experience as a traumatic experience in this area of your life, growing up, by the time it gets to your heart chakra, guess what happens? you start to attract the things that you went through at an early age because your chakras was never unblocked and you never knew the way to release the energy. And today I'm gonna to show you how to do that. So we dealing with the chakras. We can never become the God at his fullest potential unless this is all cleared up. It's called deleting. One of the things in time that I, I've learned to do and take practices is a, a science called EFT, it's called Emotional Freedom Technique. Now, we all have something that happened to us when we was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. That affected us traumatically, even if it was the little boy across the other side of the room in the class calling you ugly. Now, as small and simple as that may seem today, those things still affect us if we didn't delete it. So, me and a brother named Tahuti start studying all these different sciences. We ever have time between martial arts, bullshitting around, and doing some chants, mantras, heckers, and doing business. So we decided one day that we were going to start looking to this thing called EFT. Now, he introduced it to me, and I'm so glad he did. EFT is called Emotional Freedom Technique, and a guy, a white boy named Gary Craig, kind of like popularized it. Well, we know he didn't create it because he never created the meridian. And it deals with meridians and tapping and tapping the meridians. You know what you call a setup phrase. So for instance, 
you just was down the street and a lady down there ran into you, right? You get upset. Now, about 10 minutes later, you cool off. It ain't no big deal, but it's still in you. And how you know it's still in you? Because you respond to it the same way the next time it happens. Instead of understanding it. Now, one of the things Gary Craig started teaching about the EFT, the emotional freedom technique, was tapping. He said he wanted to try to meet with this doctor to learn some techniques on how to free people, whatever, of certain emotional things and scars that happen to them. So he asked the doctor about some, I can't remember what the first thing was, but the second thing was EFT. First time he paid $100,000 for a training class. White boys, rich down in Texas, got money like that sometimes. Next thing you know, he learned some about, he learned his other son, it's called EFT. He, he, he named it, coined it EFT, but the doctor, the doctor that he was talking to, that he gave the money to, started telling him about experience with this lady. This lady was a, had a phobia of water. Anytime she get near lakes, uh, the lawn water, grass, the grass water thing on outside for the lawn. Anytime she got near any of that, she would start to have these particular experiences shaking. She had a fall. This doctor tried everything, hypnosis, all kind of stuff on this one. So one day, he being that he knew some about acupuncture or acupressure. He started asking the woman questions. She went down by a lake. She didn't even get 30 feet within the lake's range and started shaking and hollering and going crazy. So the doctor decided, damn, okay, take her back up to my house. He says, how do you feel? She said, I feel something in my stomach. So, of course, he used the pressure point of up under the eye. Pressed down under her eyes. At that very moment, the woman ran out of the house, ran down to the lake, and jumped in the water and started swimming. So, Gary Craig decided, okay, well, I'm going to create this thing called EFT, which he could never can create because we already had the science of acupuncture and acupressure. But it's a technique that works very well. And uh, I want you all to participate with me today. You can go home and do this and relieve, relieve yourself of whatever issues that you're going through. I mean, one time, I got upset. I was upset with my daughter's mother. And I called her so many different names, I ain't even see it right now. Not to her, but when I got on the phone with her. I immediately started doing EFT. I did EFT for like five minutes, if that. Did a setup phrase, and the setup phrase goes like this. Whatever you're going through, you say, even though, can I hear you? Even though. I have this problem, blah, 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 whatever it is. I completely where y'all at? Hold on, I gotta hear like a hip hop. And deeply. And deeply. Accept myself. While doing this. No, 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 you ain't gotta repeat that. I did, but that's cool. You start tapping on this particular point, it's called a karate chop point, it's a meridian right here. So you're saying, even though. Can I hear you? Even though I have blah blah blah. I completely and deeply accept myself. You say it three times, and you do this three times. That's a setup phrase because the polarity of your mind and your ego don't want to accept when you're wrong. 